Recognize for five minutes the gentlelady from New Mexico, Ms. Stansbury. Great, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome, Mr. Miller. It's wonderful to have you here today. As a proud OMB alum and former uh, civil servant serving in this great nation's government of ours, I'm especially happy to have the final word here in the committee before closing statements. I served at OMB between 2011 and 15, and I was a program examiner in the OMB, in the OMB interior branch. So um, it's wonderful to be able to be on this side and to say thank you to all of your staff and of course to anyone who's watching back in the EEOB or the NEOB. Hi friends. Um, I want to just take a few moments to talk about the importance of the civil service and the attacks that we saw in the previous administration. As you are well aware, in October of 2020, then President Trump issued an executive order that sought to turn our federal workforce into partisan loyalists. Thankfully, uh, Democrats in Congress worked to prevent implementation, and the Biden-Harris administration revoked this order almost immediately when they came into office. But it went far beyond that executive order, we saw during the Trump administration that across the federal service, um, you know, there were heads of agencies and departments that were moved within the SES bands, and whole agency headquarters were moved to different cities and states uh, with the intention of trying to get civil servants to quit their jobs because they couldn't fire them. It was a massive disruption to the federal workforce. Thousands of people left their jobs, and part of why we're still struggling under the current administration to catch up on so many vital services is because of the actions that were taken. And I know, Mr. Miller, you're serving in a political role, but talk to us about the importance of our civil service. What, what is their role within the federal government, and why is it so crucial that political appointees don't serve in every single role that the federal government does? Thank you, and thank you from, uh, for your service at OMB. We're proud of all of our alumni. Uh, the first, the effective performance of our organizations, this is true in public and private sector, is based on having strong teams and strong culture. Within the federal government, we have a 140-year tradition of a nonpartisan, uh, a nonpartisan service system based on merit, that we look at people's skills, their expertise and their experience. We want to cultivate that irrespective of what their personal views are. We want our teams to bring that to the office every day. I know as a leader and a manager, I want a team that gives me their very best, that gives me their real views, even if those views are in disagreement with my own, because I want the best advice in making decisions about what we need to do going forward. We have 3,000 different roles that where we have political appointees fill them in leadership positions across agencies. They are responsible for setting the agenda, for leading those agencies, for ultimately being the decision makers. But the institutional knowledge and the expertise of our civil servants is critical to the well-functioning of our government, whether that's providing good customer experience at a call center or that's delivering relief after a disaster. Having our civil servants know that they are there based on their merit, is critical to wealth performing organizations irrespective of who is in the White House. Thank you. And, you know, I would add to that, not only are they kind of the heart and soul of these institutions themselves, they're the institutional memory as well as the folks who know the law and compliance with the law. And, you know, I was, I left OMB in 2015, as I said, and then went to the Hill before I moved home. And I was struck during the Trump administration when some colleagues of mine who were civil servants within OMB were raising alarm bells about nefarious actions that were happening with politicals under the Trump administration. And in fact, months before the news broke, I was hearing from folks that uh, the politicals at OMB were trying to use apportionments to violate uh, the Budget Control Act basically to withhold aid to Ukraine. Now, there's probably no one in this room except for me and you and the staff sitting behind you that know what an apportionment is, and that's because that's the institutional memory and functioning of how OMB releases funds that are appropriated by Congress. So if we need any example of why we need a civil service, how about following the law and making sure that no U.S. president ever again can violate the law and withhold aid to a foreign uh, ally 
uh, in its efforts to try to hold back an adversarial nation. I mean, this is literally global democracy on the line. So um, I appreciate your service. I appreciate the service of all of our colleagues. And with that, I yield back.